have uh, good news for everyone. Uh, we have a good uh, test automation framework that uh, allow you to write tests with pleasure, and we would like to present it uh, for you. Uh, just first question before we start. How many of you are familiar with test automation on Selenium, Selenit, or any other framework? Okay, nice. So we have a target auditorium. So let's start from our presenting. Uh, me is uh, Roman Eovlev. I'm in testing is almost uh, 14 years, so have a lot of experience in different testing areas. And the uh, original architecture of this framework, uh, this list of uh, test automation tools. Uh, this is Edgar. Yes, uh, I'm an uh, automation engineer, almost uh, 12 years exp uh, experience in the field, and so. I'm an active user of JD Framework, so our presenters today are architecture and the active user, practical user, and we decided to introduce in this manner to be more understandable for you. Yeah, so we would like to present it from two points of view, the common architecture and the benefits for business, for you, and from practical perspective. So, let's start. What is about the GDI brand in general and GDI Lite framework that we present uh, uh, for you? Uh, first of all, GDI, uh, if you w work with Selenium, uh, maybe you know that this is uh, mostly, uh, this is the most popular uh, tool for test automation in uh, the world, but uh, even its developers say that this is uh, mostly a low-level framework that uh, allow you to operate with text on page and and uh, uh, it will be good to have frameworks uh, above each, some kind of wrappers. And each test project that starts uh, in general uh, develop its own framework or use already developed frameworks like Selenit, uh, Serenity, and the one is GDI. What we um, uh, add to GDI and which, oh, to Selenium and which uh, main um, uh, features we have. First of all, uh, the GDI framework let you to write tests on user language, uh, mean uh, using uh, UI elements that you have on page. Uh, the typified elements is the main feature. You can write uh, like, um, I fill some form, I uh, click on button, use some text fields, operate with tables, and so on. So you will use the uh, understandable UI elements in your tests. And also, we have a lot of features uh, related to uh, stabilization, so you you will never need to uh, uh, wait something or uh, you never get uh, stale element exceptions and other things that uh, you can get in Selenium. Um, one more thing that's written in the below. Uh, when you start uh, tests from GDI, you don't need to think about the drivers, how to download it, which version, and so on. You can uh, just write your tests, and they, the framework automatically download all things and uh, start in Chrome. And in test properties, you can uh, set up how you can run them. But in general, GDI is not the only one framework. We also have a list of other frameworks for different types of testing, GDI Dart for web services, GDM, this is our plugin to generate page objects. I will show you a demo in the rest of the presentation. And uh, we have framework for mobile and desktop with a little, least, uh, a little bit less support. So uh, what is the UI element, just in details? Uh, we have, uh, in addition to standard page object, I think you're familiar with uh, pattern page object, uh, we have uh, extension for it, we call it UI object. So each page can be divided on some sections, if you would like. Uh, originally, this is like logical page objects. We call it them sections. And these page objects can be typified. So you can add additional capabilities to this section. For example, you can fill form or submit it or uh, some other stuff. Also, you can have uh, complex elements. Complex elements, it's originally a list of Selenium web elements. So uh, elements that can be described by uh, two or three locators. Or this is the list of uh, elements, like checkboxes, radio buttons, and so on. And of course, uh, simple elements. They are all also no, uh, uh, called uh, by some names. For example, text field, checkbox, so you uh, easily can understand what it's about. And uh, they have exactly the function uh, you need from these elements. So you can't, for example, send uh, some text in button. This is uh, have no meaning, so you can do it in the GDI, but can with Selenium. <laughs> 
uh, from structure perspective, this looks like this. So you have a page, you have section, in sections you have list of elements or some subsections. And you can, and all the locators that you have in these sections are uh, in cascade mode uh, inherited from the previous section. So you can have small locators in, uh, for elements that are in section because they are uh, looking in the context of the section. Uh, how it looks from code perspective, uh, this is the site entity where you can uh, mention some pages uh, with uh, URL and titles uh, and each page object can be represented with list of elements that you have uh, some types, for example text field button, which is uh, more uh, clear to understand than just the element, a lot of uh, elements uh, dozens you have. And uh, because you have typization like extended page, for example here, we already have some functionality for this uh, page object. For example, uh, we write just this code and we can open page by this URL, we can validate this page uh, title, URL and so on. Uh, these functions are already implemented in framework, you don't need to write this code in your page objects. And uh, one good thing, uh, you can uh, initialize all your page objects with just one um, line, uh, initialize site. Uh, originally, if you work with Selenium or Selenium, you need to initialize each page object uh, using page factory. Uh, so here, just one line, and all page objects are initialized in cascade mode. And these additional features for page that I already mentioned. Uh, Okay. Uh, just a few examples of uh, your elements. This can be some forms, uh, menus, drop downs, and so on. This is how we can write them. Um, in GDI Lite, we would like to. Uh, this is a lot of uh, understanding uh, what is the button, for example, drop down, and how it's uh, represented in different frameworks of, uh, of de development frameworks for uh, developing sites. So we try to combine our uh, elements in uh, following some standards. For example, first is um, standard for HTML5. We have all elements that are, familiar, uh, are usual for HTML5, like drop downs, checkbox list, and so on. But also we plan to have additional packs for uh, other popular frameworks like Bootstrap, for Angular, React, and so on. So yeah, if your developers develop a mm, site on these frameworks, you can use a special pack of elements that are um, good suit to your application and you need to write less code to use them. Uh, one interesting thing in GDI, we also have a kind of list of page objects or list of sections. For example, uh, we have a Google results example, uh, or Google search results, and uh, it can be represented like small sections or list of small sections. Each, each section are the same, uh, have same elements like uh, title, link, and description, and you have a list of them. Uh, you can just, in GDI, you can just describe one section, how it looks like. So each section has label, link, and description. Or of course you can write here not web element, but link, text, and other defined elements. And then just write list of these search results, these sections. And in the, after that you can uh, assess to each uh, section uh, by ID or by name. For example, I want to click on the link in EPUM GDI uh, section. I just write uh, get EPUM GDI, click link like this. For example. Oh, there you have example. So like this. Uh, one interesting thing that we have for lists also, uh, you can uh, assert, we have uh, integrated assets to all elements that are speci specifically uh, do the work uh, with uh, these elements. So for example, for a list of elements, you can use uh, assets like uh, assets that all elements are see, uh, meet some requirements. For example, all have uh, word with research or no one uh, have some things or any anyone, things like this. Uh, and uh, of course we have these assets for simple elements like uh, asset that the element is displayed with have some text, uh, some attributes and so on. And one good thing uh, about our assets uh, that we are already wait that condition will be satisfied during some time out. So if uh, for example you um, have table that loads during uh, not immediately but uh, one by one and you just want to uh, know uh, does this uh, 
uh, table have, uh, for example, 10 rows, uh, if you just write uh, open page and uh, ask that, that table has uh, 10 rows, uh, first one uh, then uh, in Selenium you will get, for example, f f table with four rows or three rows and asset will fail. And GDI will wait while during timeout uh, it will get uh, 10 rows. It's uh, really usable, uh, useful for a lot of cases so you don't need to, uh, you expect something from page and maybe because of some lack, uh, some uh, problems of loading, uh, you will not get it immediately, but the DDI will uh, wait it for you uh, this, and you don't need to write any additional code. But if during timeout, for example, 10 seconds, you can't get uh, the expected result, of course it's failed. And uh, one more thing, uh, the GDI assets are powered by Hamcrest. This is the most popular um, a library for mass uh, assets, uh, so you can use its uh, capabilities like has item, contain string, uh, and uh, validate other stuff. For reasons, then you don't need, don't want to write big page objects and want to validate some small stuff uh, just right now. You can use our simplification uh, things like uh, in Selenit or jQuery uh, style. So you can just write this code, no other code, no page objects, no initialization, and it will work. Uh, this is quite simple, just locate and the action what you would like to do. Just uh, static pay open URL and uh, you can go to the page. No other code needed, no driver initialization, no nothing else. But we don't recommend uh, this style uh, for a big approach because uh, page objects are always better uh, for maintain uh, your test. So I am led the word to uh, Edgar and he will uh, show how uh, we can increase, uh, reduce amount of uh, code that's written in, uh, GD, uh, in Selenium originally and uh, how simple it looks in uh, GDI. GDI. Thanks, Roman. So before starting seeing how the, to reduce the amount of code uh, using, uh, by using GDI, let's uh, go a little bit, uh, sorry, uh, we, can, uh, we should refresh our minds uh, for two things we have just heard. It's the structure of what the GDI uh, su uh, supports and offers uh, us. It's the main structure architecture. It's the site which contains, which the is the site we one-to-one uh, -one mapping to the real site, and good uh, test automation framework should look like like this. So it's a site uh, which contains uh, pages like contact page, mm -hmm. or can be some home page and so on, and every page contains sections. Sections is some logical uh, piece of elements or group of elements. For example, here it's a section. It can contain several tabs uh, or some uh, buttons or uh, drop downs and so on, web elements. Here we see page which contains section can, uh, and section itself contains some web elements and so on. Uh, then uh, the site or page can contain all the uh, headers, left menus or footers and so on. So the architecture is uh, one more time one to one mapping to the real site uh, which offers uh, the pages which contains sections or forms we will see uh, what forms mean uh, and also web elements and every section and form contains web elements is the main uh, feature to start and to understand and then, uh, as Roma mentioned already, uh, we have uh, element types. So each web element has it, uh, its type. For example, uh, it starts simple, text field, checkbox, drop downs, and so on, every web element that we know and we are using. And the second level is the complex element, which, is, which are sections and forms which contain me uh, menus uh, uh, and uh, tabs and so on, and which contain themselves some uh, simple elements and the composite elements, uh, which contain all the complex and uh, simples. They are co uh, composed uh, by several types of simple, uh, complex elements and uh, sections and so on. For example, the header, it contains some drop down, some just uh, buttons, or can be some combo boxes and so on. Uh, and let's 
go to the main, the code reducing section. Okay. A little bit slower, but I hope we will reach. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Uh, let's start this section. So uh, we know already how the structure, uh, how the structure is done for the GDI, and uh, what kind of elements, simple, complex, and composite we have. So uh, here is the form example. We saw what uh, what is the section. Let's say footer or header. It's a one logical piece of uh, web elements, right? It's a group of elements. Let's say that's a section. But this one is the form. The form is the very like to the section but uh, it has some fields which should be filled and then saved and submitted and so on for example this one has some name last name position uh, and so on all these fields uh, can be uh, written in one time li like one uh, big complex element and then uh, then can be it saved let's uh, and also, uh, what we do, so all of us, almost all of us are automation engineers here, and I am sure that we used uh, the Selenium and other frameworks to create page objects and so on. So what is the page objects in general? Page objects, it's the list of uh, web elements finding by their locators, right? We are configuring our locators and giving the element, web element, web element, and so on, uh, is the general uh, approach. And then what we do, we are creating all the methods to work these, uh, with these web elements, right? So click or select from the drop-down and so on. Uh, everybody know how, knows how it's uh, done for the Selenium. Uh, for the Selenit, uh, other frameworks which are very popular, maybe you are uh, you used it and prefer this approach. Uh, they offer the same way, uh, a, diff a little bit different uh, syntax maybe, uh, but uh, is the same. For example, for the Selenit, it can be written in this way: page object. And uh, let's consider we have some form. Uh, which have, has the 10 elements and we should fill them and submit them. And let's create some code and how uh, much code uh, does it, uh, it, it will be to uh, do this function, right? Uh, to do this uh, testing. Uh, it's approximately 40, 45 lines for the mentioned frameworks. You can just experiment, do yourselves and just compare. And what do you think, uh, uh, how much code uh, it will be on JDI framework? Of Good. course, it will, be, uh, will have some advantage. Uh, otherwise, there is no idea to introduce it, right? So, uh, one big step, the first big step, uh, which we should do to uh, so reduce the amount of code. Edgar will show uh, step by step how we can reduce the code from original uh, code from Selenium to GDI code. Okay, yes, one more time. So we saw how it, uh, it uh, how the code is done for the Selenium and Selenium, and now for the JDI. It's uh, well, first step uh, as we have uh, all the uh, types of web elements. And what does it mean, type? It's a class which, can see, uh, which uh, is called, uh, which is named like this element, like button, uh, and or uh, checkbox or drop down. And uh, it has all the needed functions and methods to work with this element, right? Uh, one more time, remember uh, uh, how uh, you create page object in Selenium. You created all the needed functions, but now we have all the types. And that's why there is no code for the methods. So that's really cool. Our so, first step, uh, we just need to describe elements and don't need to describe the methods for the form. No more uh, simple methods uh, for working with the elements we need. No more. And this cool step to get free from the uh, methods. 
And then the second step, it's uh, for example, you see defined by uh, everybody, I think, is familiar with this structure of the locators. Uh, but now JDI offers another approach to simplify uh, the uh, locators and plus uh, the cont uh, as uh, we talked about the forms we see we are just extending form and giving for the for one logical uh, section or section or form uh, we are giving the elements and just it uh, we defined by or so you see this structure with find by expat or CSS and whatever you want, but now we are giving you this structure, uh, this opportunity, expat just or CSS, and uh, giving uh, and you can describe like web element. If your uh, framework, let's say, is very big and you don't want very quickly and you can't just in time measure in some time measure to uh, the, uh, to migrate to the JDI we can or it's just uh, very familiar and very convenient for you you can ju just use web element or the type uh, types of web elements which uh, offers the you know, our framework and then another step so you see here expat css and, uh, and so on so if you want uh, so, um, some much general uh, frame uh, locators you can just measure ui so it can be both uh, XPAD, CSS, and whatever you want. So we have extended uh, locators that extend capabilities of CSS and XPAD. I will uh, show you this. Uh, oh, it's in attendi uh, uh, appendix. Uh, so if you know the CSS is a pretty much simple locators, you can write it uh, with a small code. But uh, XPAD is a little bit more code. But uh, in some ways, you can't write uh, CSS because you need to go uh, search for by text and so on. And we have a special locators in GDI that combine both things, the power of fixed path locators and the simple way to write them as CSS locators. So, for example, if you want to write uh, search by text, you can write just in this way and use here the parts of CSS locator, for example. So you can search by text in CSS like this. Uh, and uh, another way to introduce our locators, let's say you are using on your uh, framework some Selenium because it's a very popular uh, framework as well. You can use and you uh, for you it's convenient to use this style. You are free to choose this style for describing the locators. So uh, for uh, writing this code, let's say uh, so filling some uh, fields in the form and submit for the Selenium, we should do uh, uh, by set keys and or some function and giving all the parameter as a parameter, right? All the fields like parameters. But for the JDI, we are just uh, creating the form and then uh, contact form, let's say submit, and that's it. And uh, we are giving some data, entity data, and it uh, saves all the fields. Uh, we will show then how it uh, can be done. And here, uh, it's, uh, it appears that uh, it can be done approximately in average amount of uh, codes is 10 lines uh, instead of 40, 45 lines of code in Selenium or Selenium. So just refresh, we remove all the methods for form, we simplify uh, element locators and even the annotations for them. And we also can add the typified elements here to additionally reduce the amount of code. Yes, for example, for the web elements, you are writing, yeah, question? Um, uh, so, uh, any form contains some validation. Uh, if you are submitting, uh, for example, in one uh, the form is not saying yes. In, um, well, of course, we, uh, we, we should get, yes. Yeah. And how is that part is uh, uh, you are just getting the error that uh, the form can be saved, uh, can be submitted because of uh, lack of data or incorrect data. Uh, but uh, if you need to check some error um, messages, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you have um, range that uh, the value can not be bigger than uh, 100. Mm -hmm. You are submitting uh, uh, 101. 
and uh, you should check validation message in the form. Uh, okay. So when uh, you are submitting an error appears on the website, right? So the error itself, it's uh, it's a web element, right? Yes. You just uh, can get it, get the de text from the error, and ju do just a session, and that's it. Uh, mm, I mean, uh, in the form, there is no... Um special mechanism or methods yes. for this. No, we haven't it uh, for now because it's uh, really different uh, from perform to form uh, how it's handled. Uh, but uh, we provide the capability to write, to extend from the form and write my own awesome form uh, with capability to validate uh, the uh, error messages. Uh, the good idea here that uh, you operate these elements and you can use this, your form, on uh, a lot of places in your, in your site, mm -hmm. just one write, one time describe it. Uh, this is the capability that uh, provide GDI. We, uh, we can't uh, predict all types of elements that uh, can appear on your application. Sometimes it's really complex and really specific. But we uh, provide you a simple element that commonly used and we provide you capability to create your own elements and use in the GDI framework uh, infrastructure. Is the main advantage of uh, test automation frameworks like JDI because uh, the main uh, disadvantage of other frameworks that they uh, don't have, they uh, put your, uh, you on a f some frame and you can't just, uh, it supports this one and uh, no more. And uh, you should use only these features. But JDI it's very free and it gives you that chance to inherit it. If uh, you have some monster elements, if uh, they are very specific, okay, just uh, inherit section or button or combo box and uh, create your own one. So by the Selenium, let's say. And uh, continue with the JDI uh, uh, functions and advantages. Okay, it's clear? But that's not all about the 10 lines. And it's we can write it, it just in one, two lines. It depends on how many elements you have here. Maybe uh, just. Yes, it's uh, the case when we, uh, let's say, uh, we are uh, we having the elements which have the same idea. Let's say uh, last name. Uh, example, yeah, I will yeah. describe this on the next slide. So uh, in some cases, you can just write the form in, just uh, list the elements you have on form. No locators, no methods, or just a specific method that's uh, specific to your application and not so common. How we can do it in GDI Lite? Uh, let's imagine that uh, uh, your developers have, or you, you have good relations with your developers, or your developers follow some standards and write uh, uh, some IDs or some way to identify your elements. Uh, you can always uh, talk to the developers and ask to add uh, ideas to your elements. If uh, the elements on the site already have some good names, for example, have IDs like name, last name, gender, and so on. And this is the pretty much sim similar to uh, field names you would like to write on the form. Uh, you can write in one uh, line before all your tests how you will identify smart locators. Smart locators mean that your locators can be uh, created using the field name. So, for example, in this way, we say if our web element haven't annotation, we try to look on the locator that will be created, like ID for the name of this field, for example, name. And we can write in this way uh, just all these elements in like web element name, web element last name, web element gender, and so on. Because this element haven't locators, and GDI will try to uh, search it by common locator used in your test application. So if you uh, have some agreement with your developers or they have good locator, you can write it in just one line. And because you have annotations, you can uh, uh, add all elements just in one line uh, in Java. Uh, without write them one by one. Or you can, of course, use the typified elements and write that you have four text fields here, one button, and for example, drop down, and so on. So this provides you a clear and really simple idea of what your form contains, really small, small amount of code. And so we can have just one, two lines. But this is not, uh, not all. For now, also, we have, we, can, we have idea how you can just write it in one line, but it's described not here. 
Okay, so uh, so this part is very and uh, also uh, please does it make sense the previous section the the previous one because it's a very uh, powerful technique to reduce the code and to simplify our uh, page object if it does uh, does make sense we can go forward and also the time is yeah, so uh, okay uh, maybe I can uh, faster. Okay, so uh, this is uh, just one example. We have a lot of uh, complex elements. For example, tables is much more complex and have a lot of uh, stuff that already implemented. We have drop downs, drop downs, multi selectors, and so on that already have all actions that you need from these elements. And this helps you to reduce the code. Uh, other thing, you don't need to write uh, any kind of thread slips, wait until, or some other code. JDI uh, will handle most of these cases. Maybe just a few cases you just need. You need this, but not uh, not a lot and uh, also you don't need to write any code related to uh, logging your element actions uh, GDI will provide really uh, a clear logs I will show it uh, later and of course you don't need to think about uh, how to download uh, driver and put it as I would say uh, all the stuff are managed by GDI manager for web driver uh, let's I would like to show you one another interesting example how to write uh, test automation in just really fast. So uh, let's imagine we have a simple, not so simple, but mm, typical test. We need to log in on this uh, on some page, uh, go to this contact page where we have some contact uh, form, uh, clicking on in the menu contact form and fill this form with uh, not so only simple elements, but drop downs, multi selectors and so on. This is not e simply to write in Selenium, but you can do it, of course, it's not a problem and submit this form. And after this, submit it, we would like to validate that uh, all uh, fields uh, that are in form are the same that we will we submit. Uh, so we want to validate that we submit exactly what we, uh, so we get exactly what we submit. So this is the scenario uh, I would like to show you. Uh, just all the stuff that I described. And just question for you, uh, what, do you what do you like? Uh, how, oh, what do you think? Uh, how many time from you as a test automation engineer will take uh, to automate this test scenario? Create a page, uh, create login form, login in it, create page object for uh, context form, f uh, create methods for fill it, uh, submit, and after that verify all this stuff. Uh, how many of you uh, just raise uh, hands uh, think that this will take from you more than one day? Okay, you yeah. are pretty much good guys, uh, professional engineers. It's about uh, half a day to day like this. Okay, it's about five, ten uh, uh, hands. It's uh, take less than half a uh, day, maybe two, four. It's the last option. No. <laughs> it takes uh, from one to two hours from you. Uh, you can just try. Uh, this is maybe your home exercise. Just try. I uh, will provide you the link to the site. Uh, just try just for you to understand. Uh, can you do it in two, two hours? I think you need to be really, if you do it, you can do it. You're a really good engineer, uh, automation engineer. Less than one hour. Okay, no one. And 10 to 20 minutes? <laughs> no. Okay, I will show you an example uh, in two minutes, a small two minutes video when I create this, uh, this scenario. Let's uh, show it and uh, after that we will go step by step what happens here. So here we have some uh, project where we just have test without page object, so it's just scenario. And also we have some data. You can create it after the test generation, but for now, just to save your time, I already have it here. And we haven't any page objects uh, in our test, nothing. We go to the site, uh, open GDI pl GDN plugin, plugin, and click one button, generate. We also already have some predefined data for how to find these elements and what page should go through. But after the result, we get the page object after the generate page uh, button clicked. We put it in our folder and our tests are done. So uh, we can uh, execute it. Uh, of course, uh, the original uh, scenario is uh, vice versa. So you f uh, uh, first uh, create a test uh, page object, uh, download it in some seconds, and then you write this uh, 10 lines of code for uh, business logic and uh, how to fill data. You see the test scenario uh, 
are done, it's uh, passed, and uh, as a result, we have not only the good uh, test, but the pretty much readable log that with all actions that uh, we have in our test scenario, we also can have it in console and in the log file. And this is no effort from me to write this code. This is page object that I generated. It has all titles, uh, URL from the pages, and some elements locators here. And also we can, of course, um, get the good report with Allure. By default, we can open uh, Allure serve uh, method, uh, run the server, and uh, see the result in uh, Allure reporting. Here our test, it's passed, and you can see that in test scenario, we have uh, exactly the same scenario that we descri described in the page and uh, we described in test scenario. Uh, this is the cool example. I would like to go step by step what we get. So originally, what we uh, the typical uh, way how to write tests using GDN uh, page generator. You will go on site uh, using some rules uh, how to identify elements. Uh, you can change them, or we have by default some rules. I will go through them a little bit later, and you can just describe the list of uh, pages you would like to generate. You go through uh, and press button generate. You will get page object, put it in your uh, in your uh, application, in your test framework, and then you can write test scenario using this page object. Uh, you can see that I haven't, uh, I all, all only generate page object, so I can't write any code, any methods in it. Yeah, all these methods are already in framework, and I can just write this. Uh, eight, yeah, eight lines of code uh, of business logic operating with these elements. I have home page. What I would like to do? Open it. I have some user icon. I want to click on it. I have login form. I just say login form. Login as my user. Uh, I have a contact form, for example. I say contact form, submit some default contacts. Uh, and after that, I would like, of course, to validate that uh, contacts and form are the same. And I say uh, validate or check uh, that uh, uh, contact form has exactly the same entity, default contact. Uh, if something wrong on the uh, some other fields are in text fields, I will get an error message. And uh, here the uh, log. We can see that it's exactly the same this scenario we described. You can easily get this uh, report and send the link to, for example, your customer or manual key to say what are we testing. You don't need to write this scenario, but it will be in log and you will get it. And of course, you can manage the level of your log and get more details. Uh, if you put debug here, for example, get all locators you use here. This is the log just for like a business, your manual case and so on. We're not so interested in locators. And this is how we can create the data. Uh, this is also an interesting feature of GDI for data classes that you don't need to really extend. You just want to have data here. You can extend them from data class class and just write only the element only the elements that have your business entity. You don't need to write uh, any constructors. You don't need to write uh, good to string things or equal things. Uh, and for example, this way, how you can uh, create a new user with uh, name and password uh, like this. You can, you, we haven't any constructors here. You see, this is the old code for this uh, class. But you can write, uh, add, for example, just one uh, field or two fields or any amount of fields. You can write, uh, write them in any order uh, using this uh, section. So this is good stuff to uh, manage your test data. And uh, what we will get after the test generation, this is the site entity that we described uh, previously. Uh, it has all uh, URLs, titles here from the pages, and you can validate. For example, you can write uh, context form, uh, validate, or check. Uh, and uh, it will be validated that URL is uh, exactly the same as in page object, and title is the same, and so on. And of course, this is the elements. For example, he found the page object generator, found uh, checkboxes, some buttons, uh, some text errors, fields, and all this stuff here. And it's uh, this page is uh, from my side of view, uh, it's uh, pretty much uh, easier to understand than Selenium page objects where you get only web elements. Here you understand uh, that we have some context form that has text field, text area, some multi drop down, some check boxes. You understand what is, and this is the page objects are pretty much easier to maintain uh, sometime later when maybe not you look on this code and uh, can understand what expected from the page. Uh, so, uh, typical scenario, we spent about, okay, 
50 seconds or maybe half a minute to generate page object, about two, three minutes to write these eight lines of code of scenario. Maybe, okay, five. And maybe about five minutes to create our test data, so what we can put in the form. So in general, it takes about five, okay, 10 minutes, um, maybe 50 minutes, uh, if you, we spend some time on the list of uh, pages uh, what we go f want to go through. But uh, this is not an hour, not an half a day, not a day. Uh, and this is a scenario that we have pretty simple and obvious. Uh, just few words about the rules that we, how uh, GDN page object generator will get the fetch the elements from the page. Uh, for example, we have uh, in HTML uh, these two uh, types of buttons. One is uh, kind of input type button, and one uh, is button class. Uh, we can create two rules for them: uh, the type that has a type, uh, common locator, how we can find all buttons of this type, for example, all input type buttons will be found, and how we can uh, create, make it uh, unique. So for example, uh, first two buttons uh, makes, uh, becomes unique uh, by a value. And as a result, the page object generator will combine these two locators, common part and unique part, and create page objects for you, the type you mentioned in the rule. So this is originally how it works the rules of identification elements from the pages. Uh, about logs, that's all ah, for me. My, yeah, just a few words uh, that I already mentioned about our logs and reports. It's pretty much clear and uh, pretty much uh, user uh, oriented. Uh, and uh, the all logs uh, in GDI powered by Log4j, this is most popular. Uh, tool for logging, but if you really would like, you can even use any of your log, log, logging system. You just need to have uh, methods like info, debug, uh, error, pretty much standard for any logging system. And this is the scenario, how it looks like you have all time marks, you have uh, all data here. Uh, you didn't write the code uh, <laughs> how to get the data, what data filled in the forms, all here. Uh, that we log in with EPUM. One, two, three, we have this form, all things are here. And of course, all this stuff are in a new report. As I already say, this is a good stuff uh, because originally uh, to set up framework, test framework, it takes about uh, one month or more to set up all the logging stuff, uh, frame, uh, uh, reporting, and uh, good things. And uh, with GDI, you can use our templates, just download it, the all stuff related to reporting and logging are already in place. Few more things I don't know. Yeah. Have we found time? Uh, let's very quickly just yeah, uh, because yeah, there's uh, really few time. Uh, so uh, one, several good features uh, from the JDI uh, is the f first one: no more uh, false negative. What does it mean? Uh, it, it means that no more uh, error handling, error exception handlings, because everything is done. Uh, everything, everything the uh, we sh you should do is uh, related on the test. No more uh, exception handling. No thread slips or other ways. Every Everything is done already, uh, and of course the efficiency of clear, reducing the code. Uh, then uh, engineer m less effort from the engineers, and of course uh, less uh, it's reduced the cost because uh, it's reduced the number of engineers working on one project because one person, one senior guy or very uh, strong guy can do everything uh, with the on the uh, some middle of even huge project. So it's increase your performance, you can write more tests in, uh, in the same time, and uh, these tests are re more easy to maintain because they are, uh, have additional information about uh, elements you have, and uh, they are, have good logs so you can easily understand what the problem you have because you have this scenario. Okay, we talked how to reduce the code, how to uh, create page objects, and now uh, how, uh, a little bit about the performance itself, how uh, much does it take for the test execution so for example we have text area input uh, for uh, inputting uh, 3000 uh, symbols and drop downs and uh, tables uh, for the Framework selenium, uh, selenium, and so on. It uh, approximately takes uh, takes yeah. 70, uh, 70 seconds. You just can exercise it as a homework. And for the JDI, uh, you. 
So we have some synthetic example. Uh, he would like to put some big data in text area, for example, 3,000 symbols. So, for, so originally in Selenium, you, if you will call sense case, it takes about 70 seconds. In GDI, we have uh, some improvements here, and this takes less than 100 milliseconds. The same about the drop downs. Let's say uh, 300 values on a drop down. It's a very awful drop down. Let's say, uh, uh, say the truth. But nevertheless, if you have some cases, it will take uh, less than a second to Sorry. do all this. Yeah. Can you please describe the technology? How we can. How you have done this? How you increase? Uh, okay. After the next example, I can yes. describe. Okay, it's the example of the table, user table, let's say, how you uh, can just uh, assert something uh, or uh, uh, refer to the elements and the cells of the table. It takes uh, approximately five seconds. So, uh, for the table, this is uh, one of the big elements in uh, GDI. Uh, we can have uh, really good stuff to operate with, that, with them, so for, uh, filter by uh, uh, rows, uh, some data in it, and uh, get exactly data we want to like. Uh, this is the example how we can do it. And uh, originally, if you would write, uh, if you are not so professional and don't, don't think a lot how to do it optimal in optimal way, it takes about uh, five seconds to go through all the lines and find the data you would like to find. And the GDI, uh, we try to tune up all this stuff and. Uh, even for junior engineer, if it uh, use uh, this um, our capabilities, it takes uh, less time than. Okay, we need some more time. Maybe <laughs> just from the question, uh, how it's uh, implemented? Uh, maybe. Okay, uh, I will back to your question That's after the uh, the presentation. Uh, is it free or not? Yeah, GDI is uh, completely free. It has uh, completely uh, minimal uh, licenses, MIT, so uh, you can use it everywhere. You can even create your own application and get your money uh, from application based on GDI. GDI is totally free and will be free always. And, uh, yeah, does it have uh, no, we have uh, support for Mac and Windows. Uh, I think uh, it uh, we can uh, work on Linux, but we haven't uh, provided this uh, insurance for you. And does it support all the browsers? Hmm? Does it support all the browsers? Yeah, it supports all the browsers that support Selenium, so from uh, Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, and also you can use a mobile uh, like Appium uh, for it as an engine. Uh, just a few words about the simplicity of the GDI to use. Uh, if you uh, start from the scratch, it is uh, really interesting to start from it uh, using this old typified element that all the stuff that already in, and you think we can think more about the business logic of your tests and less about the problems that you can get. Uh, but if you already have, for example, Selenium uh, project with uh, thousands or hundreds of tests, you can also switch to the GDI in a really simple way. Not on the slide. Okay. Uh, all the advantages there. Yeah, all the things so that we all would have. Which are you using your code? Uh, Java 8. We don't need uh, much uh, uh, version because we, but we, we haven't has less because we use Lambda expressions. Uh, so any kind of Java up, uh, up to eight is uh, prefer, can be used. So if you have already the sounds of uh, tests in Selenium, you can just uh, change your dependency to GDI instead of Selenium. And you need to uh, change the way how your page objects are initialized if you use page object pattern. So just this is originally just change the uh, import uh, uh, how you get the page factory. You don't need to change anything in page objects. The Selenium page object will be uh, work in GDI, uh, but you get additional capabilities like logging all the elements, like stability mechanism, and you can go step by step to improving your page objects, for example, adding extend from form and remove all element, all code related to say, submit form, Addition, adding some stuff like drop down and so on and reduce code related to it. 
we have simple example in GitHub uh, to prove this uh, concept. So you can see here the Selenium code and uh, some pull request. Uh, what we change to to let it uh, work on GDL. This is completely the Just same as I say. Have no time uh, because and uh, everybody who wants to get the presentation, just you can uh, then write your email addresses and you will get this presentation. All the links to the JDI products and JDI GitHubs, uh, everything uh, yeah, the, there is in uh, this presentation and also the appendix. And there is no, unfortunately, time to uh, refer to these topics. You can look at yourself. And there is also the Skype. Uh, uh, yes, chat. Uh, it's general. You can just uh, write your feedback or your question to the architecture himself or the development group and quickly get the feedback. If there is some bug, you can just uh, solve it in uh, in a day or even uh, less. So yeah, everything here you can uh, find in your presentation. Just let uh, write your emails. Uh, they are after the presentation that you will get the presentation. Yeah, this is the Skype for uh, active users of Skype. Uh, this is the documentation that they have for GDI and also some tutorials how to work with it, not only the formal documentation. And this is the QR codes for our groups in contact and uh, Facebook, so you can join and uh, be a QR acquaint uh, to our news. And this is my contacts uh, if you have uh, some urgent questions. Uh, have we five minutes to questions or yeah. no? Just questions, if, yeah. If I is GDI always generating just open that code that knowing how from um, engineer side <coughs> Sorry? Sorry, the one more time. Uh, GDI always uh, generates uh, optimized code, yes? Yeah. So no, no. engineer in what is required. No, 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 <laughs> not always. Uh, the GDN is uh, our framework to uh, generate page objects, but uh, it's now in kind of concept. We have some ideas how to improve it, and maybe not not always it generate uh, good code. And uh, of course, you need uh, to add some time, some things. Mostly, you need to add the main idea of pay UI objects or page objects in GDI that you need to add actions, only business actions in your page object. So mm, actions that related to your business. So, for example, I uh, can buy some product or uh, I uh, have some transactions and so that we can't know. But we try to remove uh, all methods that are related to the elements. So like select something from top down. This is two free actions that you don't need to write. Fill the form. This is common action and you don't need to write. And same for tables and so on. And plus the customization. Uh, we so, uh, talked about the, the custom elements and so on. This uh, also refers some code uh, from the engineer as well. Uh, I hope uh, uh, you have a lot of questions. We can uh, answer on them. Uh, I think uh, yes. out the auditorium and yeah, and uh, let the sorry <laughs> that out of time, but we need to let the word to our next speaker. Yes. Okay.